A never event is a serious, largely preventable patient safety incident that should never happen if proper safeguards and policies are followed. The term is used across the NHS to describe mistakes that can have devastating consequences for patients. Examples include things like performing surgery on the wrong side, leaving instruments inside a patient after an operation, or administering the wrong type of blood or medication to a patient. But the point here when you're preparing for your medical school interviews is that never events are pivotal to patient safety. They are considered red flags, which indicate a gap in a system's safety measures because when a never event occurs, they immediately raise the questions, well, where did the system fail and how crucially can we ensure that it never happens again? This leads to a culture of examining mistakes and learning from them, which is critical to improving healthcare standards. So the first really important set of things to understand is that the consequences of a never event can be life altering. The first and most obvious example is physical harm. A patient can suffer a complication like an infection, prolonged recovery or permanent disability resulting from what happened. You can also consider emotional distress. The patient and their family will experience anxiety, fear, they will probably lose confidence in medical professionals if they're involved with a serious event like this, which can have many knock-on effects for how they engage with health services in the future and how trusting they are of the staff involved. Then we need to think about professional repercussions because staff involved can face disciplinary action or even legal proceedings. The hospital's reputation can suffer significantly, so this comes back up the system. And then fourthly, financial cost. These investigations, legal cases, whenever cases like this are put under massive scrutiny, that puts a lot of pressure on an already very strained NHS budget. Now I think with all of that understood, that begs the question, why are these things so bad that they deserve the term never event? Because there are lots of mistakes in healthcare all the time, every day, up and down the country, no matter how hard anybody tries, we're all human, people make mistakes. As we said, it's important that people learn from mistakes, but why are never events so particularly bad and the answer to that is that they are distinct in several ways. The first is that never events are thought to be entirely preventable because evidence-based safety measures already exist to stop them from occurring at all. So when these measures fail, it signifies that something deeper, more systemic has gone really, really wrong. There are specific practice guidelines, protocols, written policies in place to stop these specific things happening and therefore they are thought to be preventable. The second is they are high impact because the physical, psychological impacts of never events on patients is very often severe and then the ripple effect that that has not just for that patient and their family but on patients' relationships with the healthcare system on the whole, those effects can be very long lasting. So in some sense, they are simply more severe in terms of their outcomes than other forms of mistake. And the last thing I want to say here is that they are unquestionably avoidable. And that's distinct from what we've said already, just because unlike other medical errors that may arise from complex disease processes, unforeseen complications that people genuinely could not have seen coming, never events are not linked to medical uncertainty. It's kind of repeating what I've said, but also not. They are the result of preventable mistakes that would otherwise not have organically happened. So then we might think about what steps can we take to prevent never events? Because they're really bad, the effects can be really bad, we don't want them to happen, so how do we stop them happening in the future? And the key phrase or idea that I would encourage you to think about is a team effort and a culture of improvement. So what are some things you can do? The first is obviously strict adherence to protocol. We write checklists and guidelines. One of the most famous examples is the WHO surgical safety checklist, which is read out before every surgery. These protocols are essential in verifying that you have the correct patient, you're doing the right procedure, you're operating on the right limb, 
or in the right place before starting your operation. The second is effective communication. You need clear up and down communication among all healthcare team members to catch these errors before they escalate and lead to harm. People need to feel free and safe to speak up if they are not happy with something or they're worried that a patient will come to harm or something happens that they have not expected. Coming back to our example of a surgery, the entire surgical team from the surgeon doing the operations, the scrub nurse assisting them, to the ODP who's in the theatre, to the medical student watching. Anyone needs to feel free and able to put their hand up and say, hang on, I'm not happy with what's just happened here. Can we talk about it and clarify what just happened? Something else to consider would be ongoing training because it's not just enough to write these policies and talk about them once. You need regular training and refreshers on policies and procedures to keep everyone's skills and knowledge up to date. As a doctor, I'm now into my fourth year of practice. Me and my colleagues still do regular emergency drills and simulations to make sure that our emergency resuscitation skills are up to date and we have to revalidate every few years to be absolutely sure. And we can involve patients in this too. Patients should be empowered to ask questions and confirm details about their procedures because that adds another layer of protection that doesn't rely on our systems which are subject to our own biases, our psychological blind spots. Patients ask us unexpected things, ask us to explain things in ways that we've not thought about before and that is really important for ensuring safety and that everyone understands what's happening. So once you've got your understanding of those principles down, let's think about some follow-up questions that an examiner or an interviewer might ask you during your interview to really test and push your understanding. So can you give me an example of a never event and explain why it's considered a never event? And a classic example of a never event is performing surgery at the wrong site. It's labelled a never event because strict verification processes like the WHO surgical safety checklist read out to confirm what's happening before every surgical procedure exist to prevent it entirely, meaning that it should never ever occur if everyone is following the protocol correctly. So then how do never events differ from other medical errors and what does this tell us about system-based failures? Well, never events are distinguished by their preventability and unlike other errors which arise from complex medical conditions or uncertain diagnoses, never events will only happen when safety nets fail and that tells us that there has been a systemic problem rather than some uncontrollable clinical factor. They're also thought to be very high impact, so although errors made in medicine can range from not impactful at all to death or severe harm, never events are usually considered to be very high impact. Okay, and so what practical steps can a healthcare team take on a daily basis to reduce the likelihood of never events? Well, I think key measures would include consistent and predictable use of checklists before procedures, clear team communication such as timeouts, really robust incident reporting systems for any near misses, and regular training to make sure that everyone knows the protocols and that they're being compliant. There should be a really open culture of communication and learning from mistakes rather than a scary environment where people don't feel able to speak up and therefore might be afraid of reporting a mistake or be so stressed that that leads them to make more mistakes. None of these things are any good for patients. So there you are everybody, that's a quick look at never events for the purposes of medical school interviews. I hope you found that really helpful. If there are other topics that you want to see, let me know in the comments down below. And welcome to 2025. Take care and I'll see you soon.